further away diagnosis because now people are seconding and thirding what you said or do you have intel that Obama is mentally ill and if so what is his mental problem I, I'm not going to say he's mentally ill he was born with sociopathy he grew up with sociopathy the system particularly the CIA at the time bred him fostered him people like Geithner Peter Geithner, when Timothy said he didn't know, they lied. The whole system lied. The Pritzkers lied, who were the uh, former uh, allies of Al Capone. I mean, the whole Chicago mob lied. Uh, Ari Emanuel, uh, Ram, Ram, uh, Emanuel, the whole family lied. So you have a product here that comes out of Chicago, out of a collusive element that doesn't have to be paranoid, but he himself is not qualified to be any type of leader. He never had it. He was never capable of it, but they thought having a black young man who had a Muslim name would in somehow change the perception of America. It was a serious mistake. He learned all the technology that we knew from DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects. He came into power and didn't really know how to wield it. He then started false flags. With Newtown was an obvious false flag, and then we have Oregon, which is a repetition of Newtown. I mean, you can, how many Asperger's mothers and kids can be shooting all those people. Even my special forces can't recruit Asperger's. So this is really ridiculous. And what you have here is a man who's totally alienated from what's going on. I don't want to give him a mental health label because I don't think he deserves it. He has to have an accountability as a man who was not qualified to do what he did, was not qualified to be president, and in fact indicts the Democratic Party so seriously that they were stupid enough, and I know the people involved, some of the liberals and famous congressmen who thought this was a great idea, and I said it was a stupid idea because he would eventually fail and he would destroy our country. Now, thanks to you and many others, we have been able to turn this tide around and see what will happen. If Trump comes in and Ben Carson comes in, now I will be very serious to your audience. I have warned both candidates that they are targets for assassination. And the reason that is the case is that they both are able to ma manipulate emotions very effectively. Plus, you have families out there in the dynasties who've known to kill people, the Bushes and the Clintons. That's not theory. That's not some make-believe notion. That is the notion that the Secret Service has to take very seriously. And also, we Americans have to hold the Secret Service accountable for what was done in 9-11 because there's no other unit in the American government who knew more about 9-11 than the Secret Service who had to protect both Bush, Cheney, and Mr. Mueller. Sure, I've talked FBI. to high-level Secret Service, and they won't tell me anything secret. I don't want well, anything secret, but, but they is, tell me. The Secret they, Service does not serve America. It's stay there. Let's come. we got to go to break. But they just tell me, it's worse than you say, Alex. It's, that's what I'm always told. It's worse than you say. I want to go to a couple phone calls here, like Shane in Nevada is asking, what are solutions? Tom and Tennessee, others will do five minutes the next hour. Dr. Pachinik, then I hand the baton to David Knight. British nurse has gotten Ebola, relapsed after nine months of being clear. Uh, Bernie Sanders, 1985 interview, we're going to play part of it, endorsing Fidel Castro and socialism, gun confiscation, you name it, Hillary's calling for. Uh, we're going to get into Paul Ryan and the push to be uh, Boehner's heir apparent and more. But it's a big deal to see Boehner having to step down and there is a big push, and there are people fighting back. And so that's the good news, folks, is that America is not going quietly into totalitarianism without a fight. Dr. Pachenik is our guest. Let's talk to Shane in Nevada. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, Alex. Um, I'm a vet. I was in the Army for eight years. Um, I'm receiving disability. I do own a firearm. But um, now there's the government saying that I'm a terrorist and all this other stuff. I was just wondering, how can we get the word out to more people about this? And if we can do a march on Washington without sparking civil war? That's a great question, Shane. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, what is the propaganda push? Some under Bush, but like 10 times as much under Obama, where they say the founding fathers wouldn't be in today's military, uh, returning vets, the number one terror threat, a new Justice Department unit to quote go after the tea party uh federalization of local police because all that does is wake up the military and police in my experience when they call them into briefing rooms and literally badmouth thomas jefferson and george washington and the free market 
that's totally woken up the military is what I found. Are they that stupid? I mean, are they really that dumb? Because I never thought of myself as that smart, and I can look at that and tell that's how I'd wake the country up. Well, you hit it right on the head. What, what they are doing is something we call in the psychological warfare paradoxical intention. In other words, many of us, people like me, want them to do that in order to show how stupid they really are and incompetent. You have to remember that no one in that White House either served in the military or was in combat like this good man who's on the phone. The answer is no, they will not take away your guns because they've been warned that if in fact they want to take the guns from anybody, and they've tried, God only knows how many absurd stand downs and false flags we've had, including Newtown and Oregon and other places which are unknown. The fact is you cannot round up all the 365 million, uh, million guns that are out there nor would they, nor could they uh, rescind any of the amendments that they would like to. It, this is all a bravado effort which will never come to fruition. What in fact will happen is that when Trump and the Tea Party moves in, and by the way, my candidate for speaker, I, I sent it in two weeks ago to the Republican Party, is Daniel Webster, who comes from the Tea Party, comes from northern Florida, and represents all the values that we believe in, strong Christian values, a, a, a less of a federal government, and has been in the, in the uh, state government for 25 years. Boehner, uh, his stupidity was obvious when he uh, picked an uh, airbrain like Kevin McCarthy, who shot off his mouth about the Benghazi committee, which wasn't correct anyway, because the FBI is going after Hillary on the basis of uh, crimes committed. So I would not be worried, uh, sir, and I would not be worried in terms of the guns that are taken away or the veterans. If, in fact, they want to touch the VA, they're going to have to do a lot more than they've done. Uh, unfortunately, they've never picked an individual who could run the veteran administration. This new man who came out of West Point, never really was in combat, but worked for Palmolive or whatever uh, uh, transnational corporation is not effective. All right, the stay VA there. Got to go to break. Fourth hour. Corruption. I'm stay there. Fourth hour coming up. Do five minutes with us, and then we'll hand the baton to. Thank you for listening to Jesus. David Knight. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Final segment with Dr. Steve Pacheco. Love to have him back up uh, sooner. Well, amazing last uh, 45 minutes or so or hour with him, getting into the, the what's happening uh, here in the world. I'll tell you this: everything the establishment's doing is blowing up in their face. Like I've never seen it before. The house of cards is coming down, but what a dangerous time to be alive. Tom in Tennessee, you got a question or a comment? Go ahead. Yeah, hey, Alex. I, w I was calling in to uh, talk to uh, Joel Scales and this. Uh, second no, no, you've been to hold that long. I understand. We're not screening your call. You're on air. Um, Russia, back when uh, Obama was speaking with Putin, and it caught him saying uh, he'd have more power in a second term. Do you think he was uh, maybe discussing Syria? Sure, that's a good question for Pachinik. Obviously, there's more behind-the-scenes diplomatic stuff with Russia. Uh, but what was Obama talking about when he told Putin, I'll be able, or was Medvedev, I believe, not even Putin, I'll be able to do more once I'm re-elected. Uh, that was back prior to 2008, uh, or, or, or excuse me, uh, the uh, last election, uh, 2012. What do you think that was really about, Dr. Pachinik? Well, let, let's understand this. Uh, Russia has never really been our enemy. Yeah, although I've been involved in the, in, the, in the regime change in the Soviet Union, I made it very clear to all of our officials that we didn't do anything to take down Russia. Russia has been a formidable ally of ours. It has always worked with us. And in fact, it has a much more serious problem of Islamic terrorism because of Central Asia. And Russia has 83 different countries literally within its time frame, which is 11 time zones as opposed to four time zones for the United States. So uh, Obama has worked with Russia because in turn we worked with Iran and Iran has been helpful to us in our military. What has not been told by the neocons and these hysterical anti-Iranian uh, individuals is the fact that Iran repeatedly helped us, our soldiers, to evacuate from Iraq and from Afghanistan, not once, but twice. And now they're willing to take on the hard work of defeating the very in institutions we created, namely ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the Sunnis. So Iran, Russia, and the United States are still the formidable powers of the Middle East. 
what will happen is that Turkey has to come in and to represent the Sunnis, and that depends on Erdogan. If Erdogan works with us, that's fine. If he doesn't work with us, he will be uh, displaced and someone else will come in. But in fact, the Middle East has been reassigned. The United States was involved in it. It's a very conscious decision. It has nothing to do with communism or anything to do with anything else other than the fact we're neutralizing all the major Saudis and the yes, extreme uh, Islamists. And that was planned for quite a time, and I was for it. And I still believe strongly that Saudi Arabia has to be taken down. They've supported terrorism for too long. The Saudi kings and princes are not effective in ruling their country. The young people have to be in charge. And, in fact, we don't belong in the Middle East. Our biggest problem will be, for us economically and politically, will be China. And that doesn't mean China is our enemy. It simply means, as Trump said, that China is taking advantage of the financial system, but it has a much bigger internal problem which we have to watch, and that is China financially cannot handle its own country. It has $1.3 billion, and President Xi Jinping, who's still more of a communist than he is a capitalist, has no idea whatsoever of how to really run an economic unit, even within communism. So the devaluation of the currency and the fact that China is in deflationary mode is a far more serious problem for the world and for our national security than any other particular. Sure, I mean, economic forecast uh, just is is a very, very uh, foggy, but at the same time, treacherous road we're on. Correct. St yeah. StevePachinik.com. Uh, check out his latest book there that's nonfiction. Steve Pachinik, thank you for joining us, Talk. It's a pleasure, Alex. Always a pleasure to have you on. Look, the fourth hour, the full fourth hour is coming up. Uh, Maya and others, if you want to hold, I'm sure David Knight will get to you somewhere in that time. If not... I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Nightly News Tonight, 7.